Okay, what I'm doing today is this is, this is just an intro. I've got a video of just uh, paper stenciling and just things you can do with it and how to make cheap stencils to add to your to your prints. I know when you're starting off, you don't need to buy all tons of equipment. Learn how to use it first, uh, and this is the way I started. I have stencils now, mostly which I got at garage sales and um, thrift stores and that. I don't use a lot of stencils and stamps that other people make. I make my own because that way my art is unique to me. Uh, nobody can make the same thing I made because they don't have what I make. So I'm going to show you how to do the basic just paper stencils and how you can use them so that they look different on your gel print. Um, the first part of it, I'm just going to show you the bit. I mean, everybody knows how to do this. When you were children, you made the snowflakes. But you can make them so they don't look quite as snowflakey. And more like a design, an actual repeat design. Alright, so you, know, you take your paper and you fold it to make a square. Cut off the excess. I'd like to have a good pair of scissors to do this. Now fold it into a triangle. Let me put a blue piece of paper, so purple, so you can see it better. Fold it into a triangle. Fold it into another triangle. See, I was prepared. I'm just not prepared to be prepared. And you can stop here and make a design. Or you can go one more. And I'm going to go one more. But what I do is I usually vary it up. And I know these are not going to last forever. Some of them don't last through the third printing. But I have some that are, like this one here, made with different materials that are pretty old. Now, I, the last time I used it, I did put a little tear in it. This is actually made with wax paper. And uh, I'll just fix that with a piece of tape and it'll still be usable. Alright, so I'll cut off the top. Now, I think I want something straight across, so I'm going to go straight that way, and I'm going to cut in. I'm aiming for something that's more, like I said, a design than a snowflake and I'm going to do straight across cuts because I like the way this looks it makes like almost like an art deco or a pagoda looking object you know those designs at the top of pagodas or Chinese writing and I'm just basically just cutting rectangles in it with a slight slant I'm going to cut a long skinny one there to get a nice open space. And I'm probably just going to cut it at an angle off at the bottom. And as you can see, instead of getting something that looks like a snowflake, you get something that looks more like a design. See? And I, yeah, actually you can cut a lot more than that out. I'm just trying to give you a general idea. And the other thing that I do is I make borders. I don't worry too much. And one of my favorite things to do is like skylines or landscapes. I'll do a small one here. And you can fold it any way you want. I do like accordion folds, but I can do it this way too. Fold it and fold it and I can do it again. Now let's just do it this way. Let's just make three buildings. One in the middle, one over here, well maybe we'll make two over here. And then maybe one over here that's got a rounded top. And 
just cut them out. And I'll show you some examples of ones that, like I said, this is just a quick job. Ones that I've done. I really don't like that rounded top. Let's point that one off too. Let's make it like the Houston skyline with an asymmetrical thing going on. Now, if you want to do a window, you can take your X-Acto knife, be very careful with it, and just cut it that way. Really got to push down though. Holding the paper taut with your fingers to get a good cut. Let's see how that goes. And you might have to cut it a few times to get it all the way through. Never have your finger behind the blade. Always be aware which direction you're pulling the blade. That's why I don't make videos for children, because I don't think they listen to the safety things always. But, as you can see, you've got your little window, or the other way to do it, fold your paper in half. A little snip that way, a little snip that way, and then put your scissors in the first snip, turn it, and go all the way up. And there you go. So I did some with lots of windows. You see? That's how you do your little windows. And when you unfold it, you have a skyline. Now I'll show you some of the ones I did that aren't quite that messy. Here's one that I did. A geometrical one. See what a nice border that makes? Here's one of my skylines that I have not used yet. I like that when it's funky. The shape of this house makes it really look funky. And here's another one that I have used. You'll see me using this one in the video. And I've used and abused it. And it's also ones that I've used to death. And see, that one's more of a floral. You can do, and this one's more of well, Art Deco or maybe, I don't know, Chinese characters. And see, they don't look like snowflakes. And when you put them together, you can get a really nice pattern. And then this is my favorite one. And when I get them like this, that I just, I mean, I've been using this one and abusing this one, and I just absolutely love what it does, as you can see. It's gorgeous. Um, so I liked it so much, I made a stamp out of it. And I'll show you in the video with a small one just basically how I went about making the stamp. I have another whole video on these stamps, so if you're really interested, you should look at that video. Okay, now we're ready to go. I'm going to show you how I print with them. Okay, so I'm going to show you now um, how I use the stencils to print. Uh, I've got all my border stencils right here that I've cut out. I guess I'm going to start with some of the geometric ones. Ooh, that's way too much. Let me pull out another palette that I can put that on. Let's pull most of that off. here for now. I'll do it sideways since I want to do those landscape, those night skyline ones. All right, we'll start with one of those. Put it along the bottom. Doesn't fit totally so I'll have to center it. 
right. Move it down. Well, see, that can be overlaid over something. I'm going to be using these in my journal. My was to be a quote journal, but didn't turn out that way journal. Let's use something bright and colorful. Right there. Okay, that'll work. Right, you got to be very careful with these. You can use it over and over if you're careful. I've made these out of the sketch page paper, so it's a little bit better than what I usually use, but not much because it's cheap sketch paper. All right, and that's what you get with that. You can get nice and subtle. See how nice that is? And that too will be nice on one of my pages. Okay, let's try one of the geometric ones. Matter of fact, let's try a bunch of the geometric ones, all on the same page. Yeah, we'll do that. That one, that one, and then that one. Alright, let's put some red in this. Let's make it more interesting. Let's bring the blue back up here. Everything's slipping today. Wait a minute. I don't like slipping. Do not like slipping. Okay, hopefully everything's nicely in camera. I'm gonna try not to jabber too much, just show you what I'm doing. I mean all this stuff is simple, but when you start combining this stuff, I'll, later on I'm going to do a video on how I combine my homemade stamps with my homemade stencils with found objects, and you'll see you can really get something interesting going. There's one. I want this one up at the top because it actually has a geometric border, and then this one. Oh. Let's put a piece of paper over it that's going to be interesting. Oh, this one is nice. This has some weird geometric stuff going on. Honestly, not sure which is the front. I guess it's this. Very gently push them down. A few resistance here. You want them nice and flat. Sometimes the more you cut, the less they want to be nice and flat. Probably best to lay them one at a time, but I did what I did. I'm gonna rub it down real good. Well, that did do something interesting on there. Look at that pattern. So I guess they don't have to just be borders. They can be the whole nine yards. They can cover your whole sheet. Gently. Very, very gently. I have been known to rip them on the first use. Boy, that makes me mad. All that work cutting them out and I go crazy and rip it the first time. Let's see, I have some pretty sheets over here that I'm using, but uh, they're very pale and pastel. Let's use this one. No, I'm too much red in that already. Let's use this one. This should do it. Alright, really good rub. I love it. Look at that. 
I'm gonna try and come up for a real close up, but that is very interesting. But that's what you can do with the borders. It's a little bit more I could pull up on this run the sheet. Yep, ripped it of course. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, as you can see, I'll just show you. I just showed you a couple, but you can get the idea of what you can do with these. They're a lot of fun to make, and they're a lot of fun to use. Very simple, very cheap. Thank you. I hope you liked my video. I'm really trying on these. I know I'm not an expert, but I am trying. Uh, I enjoy having people interested in what I do. Uh, thank you very much for viewing this like give me a like if you like it subscribe if you want to see more of these i will have more i'm actually going to have more on the stencils i've got some of the more intricate things that i do with the stencils but uh, i'll do that on another video thank you very much and you have a nice day